fucking do this. What is up, everybody? Here to give you guys this week's tabloid and trending topics with T. I want to apologize for not being on last week. I was actually in uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina, visiting um, my friend and his extended family. Well, his family, so their extended family to me. So I was enjoying my four days off. I had what? Uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday off. A sub afternoon. So that. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to enjoy my four days off from work. So, so y'all didn't get a video last week. Or oh, I wasn't on last week, so I apologize, but I'm I'm pretty sure y'all understand. I'm taking advantage of my four days off. You feel me? Plus, in order for me to do the video, then it means I would have had to go to Macaw and all other shit. I know y'all probably looking like yeah, motherfucking excuses, but that's that's pretty much what it was. So that's it. Oh, <laughs> it, you know, it, it it really ain't much. It really ain't much, but just just a little bit of talk for that. Just a little bit of talk. So y'all know I got my Long Island. And my vape. Alright, so y'all know how we do. Start off with prayers. And I'll... Oh, you don't watch other stuff? Alright, well, we, we, we gonna talk about it just a little bit. A little bit. But uh, first, um, <clears throat> Kiki Wyatt. Prayers to... Uh, yeah, you know it is. And just in case I happen to go through that, I got another one right here to pull in the cup on reserve. So I, hopefully I don't get too drunk on camera. If it happens, fuck it. It wouldn't be the first time, right? But uh, Kiki Wyatt, uh, prayers to her family. Uh, one of her children uh, was diagnosed with cancer and um, going through chemo. And we know for those who uh, go through chemo, they tend to lose all of their hair. She didn't say which child it is, but she said that her child is very fond of their hair. So uh, in solidarity with her child, she went ahead and um, shaved off all of her hair. And it's pretty much asking for prayers. So, you know, I said, of course, we're like extend the hands of prayer on that. And uh, like, <clears throat> like I said, cancer hits my family directly. My cousin, you know, uh, she had passed away from cancer back in 2008. I mean, it was it was either June or July. And crazy thing is her birthday is tomorrow. So I don't know how, how I'll be feeling tomorrow. But and I was like, so I was very close. Early, so. I, there's that and then I had an aunt who had cancer and it got so bad that she pretty much asked them to pull the plug because the pain was so severe so cancer has I know impacted my family directly and that's both sides of my family both my mother and my father's side of the family so I know it's a real thing and it's sad when you know a child has well it's sad that anybody has to go through cancer but it's really sad that a child has to so prayers to the wide family uh, also, Nelson uh, Ellis died at age 39 from heart failure. For those who don't know who that is, he uh, played Lafayette on True Blood and definitely was the comedic relief for that show. Uh, I'm still vexed at the fact that he's 30, he was 39 and he just passed away from heart failure at 39. So a lot hasn't... Oh, he was. He definitely was. Uh, a lot... Nothing more has really come out about it. But, you know, prayers to his family. Hopefully his children are holding up. That like I said, that is a massive blow. I, I I don't think anybody did either, but a lot hasn't come out. We've just gotten that. I think he passed away within like the last 48 hours. So more, more to follow, more to follow. And I did not know. See, see, I, I Illinois State, I did not know. Y'all y'all know I rip shot town all day. And, um... Prayers to uh, both Venus Williams and uh, the family of Jerome uh, Barson. I'm not going to talk too much about this because I'm waiting for more information to come out. But long story short, she entered a uh, intersection. Um, Jerome uh, Barson was in the passenger side. His wife was in the uh, driver's side, hit uh, Venus. And two weeks later, and this happened, I think, early last month. But two weeks after that incident, uh, Jerome Barson, who was 78 years old, had passed away. And there's a whole lot going on with that from the legal side. And again, that's more complex. And I want to wait until more comes out before I actually talk talk about it. But at this point, I want to say prayers to the uh, Barson family. And may he rest in peace. And also prayers to the Williams family. Because uh, I'm pretty sure they're going through a lot. I just hope that you know people can like let this play out and not really hound venus too much like the way they did brandy 
because y'all know Brandy had her situation. They drug her all the way up and down, but they ain't say none to, you know, Bruce, who is now Caitlyn Jenner, but they ain't none of my business. So that's it for the prayers. That's, that's all the heavy shit. That's all the heavy shit, y'all. So let's go ahead and get into all the other craziness that went on these last two weeks. So first, let's talk about Lala and uh, Carmelo Anthony. Now, Lala was on the Wendy Williams show. Now, there's a lot going in here. It's the shade that really fucking caught me off guard, but she went on there. Now, it's sad that rather than her talking about her other uh, ventures, her acting business and everything, she's talking about her relationship. Me personally, I'm one of those where I keep my fucking relationship shit on the hush. Like, even with my family, my family don't even know who fuck all my damn girlfriends were, and they're not going to fucking know because that's not their fucking business. Not the point. But she was on there, and she, uh, Lala admits that their marriage is not over, and pretty much this little excerpt that I'm going to read right here. So she says, I'm not divorcing Melo right now. I'm not. You know, now, she's saying this to Wendy, you know marriages are tough, you know that. Gonna come back to that, because that right there was the shade. That right there was the fucking shade. And says, um, we all know that it's filled with ups and downs. We are just going through a time right now. You say, hello, so you caught it. Uh, him and I are best of friends, and our number one commitment is our son, Keon. Hopefully I said his name right. You caught the shade, too? All right, I'm glad I wasn't the only one. Oh, shit, what's up, what's up nigga, what's up? And we have to set an example for Kia, and that's the most important. Um, that's what's most important to me. <laughs> okay. Uh, and now, before we get to the shade, the one thing that does now here's the thing: I'm not married, never been married, so and I don't have kids either. So I really, I, I try not to talk about shit that I don't know. But one thing that I find to be interesting is Carmelo has. Been cheated on her at least once I'm going to say at least once and she's saying that we have to be this example for our son okay that's cool but what is this really teaching your son because me on the outside looking in this is teaching your son that it is okay for a man to cheat on a woman and it all be okay now of course there's other stuff that I'm never saying I, here's the thing when it comes to marriage I've seen, like I said, I've seen some marriages where a people have gotten over some stuff and they ended up in a better place. I'm not, I'm not saying she's been an angel either, but it's one of those where it's just like, if y'all try to set an example, what is that example that y'all are trying to, you know, set for y'all son? That's the only thing that, you know, I'm concerned about, you know, but back to the shade because the shade was so, the shade was pretty. <laughs> But for her to sit here and tell Wendy, I'm not divorcing Melo right now. You know, marriages are tough. You know that. We all know that. The fact that she said, you know that. Because <laughs> we all know what it happened. And I'm going to be nice. I'm not going to call Wendy out her name because she ain't did shit today for me to, you know, get on her. But we all know that Wendy Man has stepped out on and whatnot and been doing all type of crazy shit on her by, you know, females fucking shoes and shit got run through the mill, you know. Yeah, I said today. I said today. <laughs> so you see, you see, y'all, y'all, y'all good. Y'all, y'all knows me. Y'all catch the shit. But that, that right there was direct shade. <laughs> I know. I know. And that's why I found the shit to be so funny. It's like, you just shade the fuck out of her old damn show. That shit was great. I enjoyed it. I got a good laugh out of that. Now, just a little bit of uh, Real Housewives talk. Just a little bit. Because it really ain't much to really talk about. But just a little bit. So first, uh, Eva Marcel, she uh, was one of the winners of America's Next Top Model. Is uh, she's going to be? Uh, she's currently filming with <laughs> on the last shit. I know she's currently filming um, with uh, the Real Housewives crew. If I'm not mistaken, I think she's filming with Nene in particular. A lot of people are saying that she's going to be a new housewife, but we can't really say Erin because you know. <clears throat> 
one thing about Real Housewives is they don't have a lot of people shooting and at the very end or it's towards the end they'll figure out she better be sharp um they'll figure out who is and isn't a good you know match and they'll determine at that point okay well who's gonna get a peach and who's not gonna get a peach like that um one season again i'm being nice today when portia was on i think it was maybe like not this past season, but i think the season before and she didn't want to and i'm gonna bring this to another situation to man but she didn't want to uh, put her relationship out there. So what happened is because she didn't want to put a relationship out there, instead of making her a full-time cast member, they made her a friend of the cast, even though she had probably shot a whole lot. So she's filming right now. We'll see what she brings to the table. And you brought up Kenya because you know that's where I'm about to go. <laughs> All right, so with that being said, right now, Kenya, uh, her spot on the show is, uh, for lack of better terms, is in jeopardy. So we all know that she had gotten married away from the cameras and he felt some kind of way about that. <laughs> Dr. King. <laughs> and Andy felt some way about that. I'm not even gonna say Bravo. Andy felt some way about that. And now I for what it's worth, he's putting the pressure on Kenya to pretty much like I, what's the word? pretty much detail the whole process and even still hearing that she's also trying to get in vitro and all the other stuff and of course with her being upper you know a little bit up there in age you know of course uh the difficulties when it i leave the show for real <laughs> uh the difficulties of uh you know uh actually carrying a baby is higher you know the older you get and if that is the case, now there's added stress on top of that. And from what is being said in the blogs, her husband doesn't want to be on the show. Most one because he don't want people in their business, which I understand that. But then the other piece of it is he sees how Bravo allow the men to be dogged out on the show. And I mean, I'm here for that. And at the same exact time, I'm here for her trying to sit here and ensure that her relationship isn't, you know, at all in jeopardy. Because, I mean, here's the thing. Say what you want about Kenya. If she really wanted this to be her storyline, she would have told Bravo, hey, I'm about to get married. Why don't y'all show up over here so we can get this on camera? So the fact that she didn't do that means that this is probably sacred to her. And a lot of people are trying to say, well, you know, she can't have a storyline without this. And if y'all think about it, when Kenya first came on, Kenya did the most genius shit and did nobody fucking catch it. Kenya really didn't have a fucking storyline when she first came on. Hold on. She don't want it on the show, I understand. <laughs> but um, she didn't necessarily have a storyline, so what did she do? Her storyline was the other females. Now, the other females could have easily shut her down, and she would have been without a storyline and would have been off the show, but that didn't happen. So if Kenya really wanted to, she can create a storyline. She can have her storyline being anything, whether it be her hair care product, another business venture, but it doesn't necessarily just have to be her husband so pretty much andy i'm not gonna say has her in a rock between the hard, rock and hard place because she could just fucking say no but he's really pushing that he wants her to have this relationship being played out so right now from what i'm understanding her peach is in jeopardy but what she is telling what she had pretty much said is she um okay well all right so here's the thing y'all i i'm i I'm not I'm not even finna do the fucking disrespect bullshit. I'm not I'm not doing that shit today. So let us continue on. So fuck it, I lost my damn train of thought. See this that see that's that fuck shit. People come on here with that damn negativity, fucking up my juices and shit. Fuck I lost my damn train of thought. Alright, fuck it. I guess we're gonna move on to the next thing. That I'm so fucking I, I was actually I actually had a point that I was trying to make. Whatever. Moving on, so since we talk about reality shows, reality shows and shit, so BET uh, has this series, this uh, new docu series called On Tour With, kind of similar to MTV's Diary, right? So, guess who's going to be their very first person to act like launch this show? Fucking Meek Mill. I'm gonna give y'all a second to marry on that. So. It's brand new series. <laughs> Nigga said who? Yeah, it, Meek Bill with two L. I won't be watching. 
not that first episode anyway. I will not be watching because who really cares about Meek Mill on tour? I know I don't. <laughs> Bro, I care. <laughs> but for those of you who want to watch it, it will be airing on BET July 11th at 9 o'clock p.m. Now, since we're talking about BET, let's go ahead and talk about Ms. Uh, Debra Lee. Now, rumor has it that she's pretty much on her way out. And I think we all can agree, those who have watched BET since she has had it. <laughs> I know, right? He's <laughs> been long till you know what? <laughs> Yeah, who knew? Who fucking knew? But um, Deborah Lee is pretty much, it said that she's on the way out. And for those who have been watching since she's taken over, there has been a decline in the quality of programming. Even when it comes to movies, you have the same movies being replayed time and time and time again. In addition to it being replayed time and time and time again, you also have a lot of straight to dvd movies so and even some of the shows have just been garbage now i will admit over the last year everything has gotten better <laughs> but it said that uh she's on the way out and y'all also have to look at it from this perspective you know viacom having bt under his wings and they all about the money and the ratings and the fact that she isn't producing that, the fact that um, it's complications, what's going on? Complications in trying to reach her to talk business and whatnot. Yes, yeah, they're they're from what I'm understanding, they're about if they haven't already given her the X, they about to. So <clears throat> let's listen. So now we're about to talk about your boy Diddy and your girls. Kendall and Kylie Jenner. We we gonna, we gonna talk about them for a second. I know y'all probably trying to figure out like what the fuck both it, but like the Jenners and Diddy got in common. Well, I'm about to fucking tell you. So a while back at the uh, I think it was the Met Gala. Yeah, it was the Met Gala. Diddy had took a picture <laughs> for Lil David. Go honestly. So he had taken you know a photo of a picture you know with a group of people. And on his IG, he put it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Hey, give me a second. I'm getting tongue tied right now. They should. They should bring. They should bring uh, Stephen back. They really should. But um, the picture said hashtag Team Love hashtag Black Excellence. Right. So <clears throat> come to find out, Kylie and Kendall were also in set picture. So he cropped them out of the picture. So Kylie went ahead and posted that onto her Instagram. So the original picture, and trust me when I say <clears throat> the picture was better with them being cropped out. <laughs> and Kylie even said, <clears throat> you know, cut it, cut it. Woo, them pics is way too big. You need to cut it. You know, doing the whole making fun thing and somebody even commented are you hurt that diddy cropped you out so <clears throat> it was one of those where okay it's a little bit of shit and it, it was one of those where even if that was the case i you know the the jenner bunch i'm the kardashian bunch i should say it better that way stunts and shows stunts and shows so <clears throat> with that <laughs> it is claimed that you know diddy kind of you know um swerved their ass again and he had uh, took a picture with Kendall. I don't know when he took it, but he has a picture with Kendall up on his um, IG. But what he said is last night at Kylie Jenner. <laughs> they, they got they got butt hurt. They got butt hurt. But he pretty much put uh, added Kylie Jenner, but the picture actually had Kendall Jenner in it. So it is one, and I mean, granted, a hey, Diddy be a little bit petty, but I'm I'm all the way to fuck here for it. Now, why am I here for it? This is why. For those of you who do not know, if I'm not mistaken, it is both Kendall and Kylie Jenner. They both. What's going on? They have it. They had. Well, I'll still say they have a T-shirt line, and this T-shirt line um, has images of. B.I.G., Tupac, uh, I think Jim Morrison, 
a couple different other people, what's up, what's up, and like have pictures of them and not really ask if they can get permission to use said pictures. And um, with this being said, Valetta uh, Wallace, who is uh, B.I.G.'s uh, mother, she had, because uh, what happened is you had the pictures and also they had their pictures kind of cropped in with set pictures. So B.I.G.'s mother said this product has no affiliation to the notorious B.I.G. estate. The estate was never contacted about using the likeness of Biggie. So that right there really caused, caused the uproar. And in the actual comments, now here's the thing. This is how you know a motherfucker a real G. B.I.G.'s mama, now that was the picture. In the comments, she fucking edited the ad. Said, I'm not sure who told at Kylie Jenner and at Kendall Jenner they had the right to do this. The disrespect of these girls to not even reach out to me or anyone connected to the estate baffles me. I have no idea why they feel they can exploit the deaths of... Tupac and my son Christopher to sell a t-shirt. This is disrespectful, disgusting, and exploitation at its worst. Oh, it is it is mad disrespectful. And then here, here's the crazy thing, y'all. Here's the fucking crazy thing. Guess how much these fucking t-shirts cost? <laughs> Guess how like the like the price of these t-shirts, like if if the fact that they were sitting here, yep, 125. One twenty, like it, the fact that they are sitting here using these people that are, you know, long gone, and then you want to see in charge one twenty five, one twenty five. Nah, nah, can't even do it. Can't even do it. But that's not even it. <clears throat> that is not even it. So after that, the uh, the uh, Jenner sisters went ahead and pulled said T shirts off uh, from their line. And here's um, what was um, put on our uh, Kendall Jenner's uh, page. These designs were <clears throat> not well thought out, duh. <clears throat> and we deeply apologize to anyone that has been upset and or offended, especially to the families of the artists. We are huge fans of their music, and it is not our intention to disrespect these cultural icons in any way. The t-shirts have been pulled <clears throat> from our retail, and all images have been removed. We will use this as an opportunity to learn from these mistakes and again, we are very sorry. So, and the crazy thing is, it wasn't just, and I also forgot, I also forgot, and this right here, they also have fucking Ozzy on there. <clears throat> and Sharon went to hers and said, girls, you haven't earned the right to put your face with musical icons. Stick to what you know. Dot, 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 lip gloss. <laughs> <clears throat> oh yeah, <laughs> and Sharon went in one fucking in two sentences, in two fucking said, "Let the ass oh, you ain't heard the motherfucker right? Don't do it, don't do it." Let me, oh, I love me some Sharon. <clears throat> Excuse me, some Sharon too. <clears throat> and that wasn't enough. So of course the apology um, did not go over well with the um, <clears throat> Biggie estate. And, you know, the biggest thing pretty much says, while we appreciate that the Jenners have made an apology and pulled the unlawful and unauthorized items, this matter has yet to be resolved. <clears throat> and the attorney of uh, the 70s rock band um, that and not, it was the Doors, they also said this case, this is a case of people who fashion themselves as celebrities who are famous for being well known, but don't actually do anything trying to utilize and steal and capitalize on the legacy of those who actually did do something and created amazing art and messages. It's ironic at the least and criminal at worst, both morally, ethically, and artistically. They are obviously attention-seeking missiles who crave celebrity and being well-known, but don't actually do anything. It's the polar opposite of the artists they are traveling all over. It's just spitting in the face and on top of the art and message and soul and legacy. <clears throat> that right there was an eloquent fucking read if I ain't never fucking seen one in my fucking life. <laughs> like, the shit is crazy. And 
<clears throat> some and one it's one of the, it's one of those where a lot of people are saying that they can't be sued but they actually can they are being um sued by different entities because you have some people who are um <clears throat> photographers that when they um take pictures they actually have rights over set photos and for them to be used outside of that likeness and without permission people can't be sued so Hey, that that right there was a foolish mistake. But we also have to remember that a lot of a lot of people who have these damn fashion lines, they are not in any way, shape, or form truly um, <clears throat> seamstress and whatnot. So all that really happens is, is similar to the. <laughs> it's like the George Foreman grill. George Foreman did not create that grill, but somebody created. They wanted to use his name and his light to sit here and make them more popular. So and that happens a lot where people don't create anything, but you have some people where it's just like, okay, well, <clears throat> your name is big, I have this product, let's merge together, and I'm gonna go ahead and give you something this month. It's pretty much how that shit went down. Pretty fucking much. All right. Now, I wanna talk about the Rob and Black China situation now. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm trying to steal some. Because, <laughs> you know, seeing as how I'm already talking about the Jenners and the Kardashians, might as well go ahead and sit here and bring this in now. <clears throat> I'm not going to sit here and go blow by blow by blow by blow of what happened. If y'all want to know what happened blow by blow, a commentary. Uh, I think it's Lovely T 2002. She actually has her Dragon Ball T series currently on its third part. For this uh, Black China and Rob thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's only a couple things that I want to talk about. Just just a couple. First thing is, why the fuck T.I. putting his nose where the fuck it don't belong? Now, yes, Snoop Dogg did as well. But Snoop Dogg was pretty much just trying to let him know. Like, hey, bro, you was a mark. Your ass got got. It is what the fuck it is. I'm surprised you didn't fucking see it, but damn it, everybody else fucking saw it. Okay. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Let, let's be clear. We will get to see you in a second, but we not. I'm not going to say that China robbed anybody. Here's the thing. China is a hustler. <clears throat> All right, she from the streets, so hey. You know, and I'm going to bring have and have-nots into this. So y'all that watch the haves and the have-nots, okay. She pretty much pulled a canvas. Okay, she pulled the can and she's like, okay, that's a mark. That's a come up. And at the same exact time, it wasn't just that. She was mad at her, you know, baby daddy tiger. So, and, of course, Rob didn't like his fucking family. So, hey, <clears throat> match made to heaven, right? So, it was a fucking mark. You feel what I'm saying? But this shit went left fast. Now, T.I. decided that he wanted to make a comment. So, he said this. Why bring your business to IG, though? Look, you got work, bruh. But at least keep it to yourself. You letting the world know you a duck. <clears throat> I mean a big duck. A mighty duck. Right on Big Donald the duck. Scrooge Big Duck. Howard the duck. Huey Dewey and Louie save the hashtag duck tails. Just hold this L. Kiss your kid. Cut your, lo cut your losses and move on. You got no moves, bruh. Now, why he do that? I don't know. <clears throat> but um let's just say um <laughs> oh very out of order. Now here's the thing, the shit was comical. Let, let, let's be clear, the shit was comical. I laughed from a good place. Oh yeah, Rob had plenty of time that day and Rob went ahead. I look, 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 look now. Look now. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm not to you. I can't talk about it. But, but, when I say, here's the thing. <clears throat> Rob pulled a move, and then the move is called Get a Bitch Up Off You. That's, that's what he did. So he pretty much went and made it perfectly clear. And this is what he put in response. Since T.I. want to chime in on business that don't concern him, let's talk about the threesome you had with China <clears throat> and your baby mama, Tiny. Don't speak on my daughter when you having threesomes with young Chai and Tiny. 
And I put that on my daughter's life since you want to speak on my daughter. Damn shame. China told me everything about your threesome with you and her and Tyler. You got no moves, bro. <clears throat> Correction. T.I. paid Tyler to have sex. I'm sorry. T.I. paid China to have sex with Tiny and him. And let's just say uh, T.I. really had much to say. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> he did pay the straight the fuck to black, y'all. <laughs> I mean, now, mind you, mind you, it's, it's one of those where, oh, what's going on? Like, shit like this, the whole thing is messy, because I ain't here to do blow by blow. I'm just here to talk about certain shit, <clears throat> but this is the perfect way to get a motherfucker up off you, and we all didn't heard, you know, the rumors, you know, we all heard the rumors about T.I. and Tiny, you know, being swingers, this, that, and the third, and <clears throat> I mean, hey. Like I said, the easiest way to get a motherfucker up off you. The easiest way to sit here and put that shit right the fuck on out there. So, I laughed at that. I really did. I, when I say I laughed from a good place, I, I laughed from a fantastic place, y'all. Well, it was a beautiful place. Beautiful place. <clears throat> now, for those who don't know, like I said, and I'm going to just sit here and I'm going to do a real quick synopsis. It ain't going to be thorough. It's going to be real quick. Like I said, they broke up. And fucking, what's that boy name? Rob got mad. When I say Rob went here and put all the business out there, he just sat here and exposed the motherfucker that she was sitting here texting on the motherfucking side. Also put up shit on there about how old boy was trying to sit here and work her to get, you know, some money up off of China and shit. So he didn't put all that up on there. He didn't put pictures of her damn pussy and shit up on there. In addition to that, what the fuck? It was something. It was something. What the fuck? Did, the whole her and the whole snap back after the baby put on that how he didn't sat here and paid for her to get this damn lipo and he didn't bought her hundred, two thousand, three thousand million fucking cars and shit. I don't know why, but literally put all that shit on there and his IG account got shut the fuck down. I think that Chris Jenner has something to do with that shit. You cannot tell me otherwise. You can't tell me Chris didn't have shit to do with that. <clears throat> and then he fucking went to Twitter and kept the shit on fucking going and like kept posting and posting and posting. The motherfucker was scoring. He was in his feelings. And when I say this motherfucker had like facts for days, <laughs> I'm saying Chris had to have done it. I You can't tell me otherwise because I mean, he was going in. <laughs> Here's the thing. He was being, you know, Patty LaBelle that day. I'm not going to fucking lie. He was, and, and look. This is one of those where <clears throat> when a motherfucker get mad, hey, I can't be upset. <laughs> I can't be upset that he fucking did it. But I'm going to get into why I, I don't agree with this. Okay. I'm partially on Rob's side. Partially. Like, again, it's one of those where you got to tell your side of the story. But there's something else in this whole entire equation that you're not really focusing on but we'll get there now black china has retained lisa bloom now this right here is gonna be a motherfucking situation if i never fucking seen one not just that she's also filed a restraining order on rob saying that rob is at him beat her motherfucking ass so you also got that so now this thing is really starting to spiral and we all know that rob for what is worth is certified you know having issues in his life mental issues and whatnot <clears throat> so this isn't really looking too good. And at the same exact time, then Tiger. Now here's the thing. I respect, like I said, don't judge me. I like Tiger. Okay. I like his music and shit. You know him. I, I like it. I, okay. It is what it is. But he just sat here and put himself in some shit. Well, I'm just like, hold on now. So he decided that he wanted to go ahead and say, alright, well, I want custody, or I want to get, I want custody of King Cairo, there's some, because of this whole fucking thing, which, here's the thing, if China want to sit here and lay down with every other motherfucker every which day of the motherfucking week, she can do that, like I said, this is a new day and age to where, ain't nobody clocking nobody fucking pussy and dick mouths, that shit ain't happening no fucking more, but he feels some kind of way about that. And here's the thing, if she's sitting here raw dog, and it, it is what it is, China can do what the fuck she want with her body. But here's the one thing that I don't think Rob considered in this whole fucking equation. He can get hit for fucking revenge porn, which in essence is what that was. Now, he could have sat there and put everything out there and not show pictures of her 
private part. So that right there was taking it too fucking far. And if you think that you're going to get custody of y'all's child in doing this, you're not. Because even if everything is right and they decide that she's an unfit mother, you're still going to be an unfit father for not just dogging her out like that, but you also have mental issues. And we've heard of many different instances of parents having mental issues with children, some drowning their children, some cutting, like killing their kids and putting them in a the fucking freezer. So it's one of those where nobody knows what it is that you're going to. Well, yeah, Chris might get the baby. Now, since I brought up the haves and the have-nots, I'm, I'm going to say this, and then we're just going to go ahead and move on, because I, I ain't got much else after this. I ain't got, I ain't got much else after this, but here's what I'm going to say. If Chris was the pimp that we all know her to be, if she was a real pimp, she would have pulled a Veronica Harrington. And I'm about to tell you why. Now, even though most of us don't fucking like Veronica, and I, and again, part of me has to be Team Veronica on because her care is from the fucking from from blah, 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 from fucking Chicago. I, I'm just saying, but <clears throat> orchestrated shit to get Jeffrey, you know, with this bitch. Now we all know Jeffrey Gay that ain't the perm, but she sat here and manipulated shit to sit here and try to control the situation. So, with that being said, Chris. If you know how the fuck your son is and you got mad that he hooked up with fucking China in your fucking mind, why not? Go and find you a nice little pretty thing that you can fucking manipulate and see him be like, look, bitches, what the fuck you gonna do? I'm gonna sit here, I'll make sure you nice, I'll make sure you set, you sit here, take care of my son, okay, deal with his fucking crazy shit, okay, go ahead and do dot, 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 bop, 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 and we gonna be good. So here's the thing, so the fact that China sat here and marked him before your own motherfucking <laughs> I'm just saying, Chris, you take because Chris, how, I'm trying to figure out, Chris, how are you going to let another motherfucker come in and fucking mark your damn son? He could, he could, well, here's the thing, he actually does have issues. Like, that shit is, if I'm not mistaken, that shit is already on paper. He has issues. I don't know if temporary insanity will work, but he actually does have issues, and that shit's documented. But what I'm saying about Chris is Chris could have marked her son before Black China had a chance to. So the fact, Chris, that you allow this shit to happen, because you did. Because you could have been made sure this shit was GTG. And here's the last thing before I move. I said I was going to be the last thing. But here's the true last thing. Real fucking talk. China, let, let, me, let me talk to you. Let me, let me talk to you, sweet. Let me talk to you. Go ahead and bring you to the car, man. She does. She really does. But here's the thing. Hey, hey, China. If Rob went out of his way to dog his own family, flesh and fucking blood, relatives, if he could do that, what makes you think he wouldn't sit here and spray the fuck out of you? And that's it. So that's all I'm gonna say about the whole about that whole situation. Again, if y'all want the details, the play by plays again, go on YouTube, Lovely T. <laughs> Lovely T. I think it's 2002, and that is. Yeah, I mean, I mean, she 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 really has been, you know, saying poking the fucking bear, but it is what it is. So let's go ahead and, and talk, let's go ahead and talk about a little bit of love inhibited hop right quick. Okay. So now we got so. We're going to talk about Stevie J, Jocelyn, Mona Scott, K. Michelle. Now, again, I might miss some notes and whatnot. Y'all can go ahead and just put them on and just type them in if I miss some because I probably am. Plus, I've been sipping and drinking and shit, so it's okay. He did. He he really did go too far posting the news, and that, and that really could, like, end his ass up in jail and shit. <laughs> the crack ends up in laughing. Well, here's the thing. I, I don't know if Katie does crack or, or Mona, but hey, it is what it is. So, let's start with, well, first and foremost, I didn't review the last, the finale of uh, Love and Hip Hop uh, Atlanta. Because, again, I was in Jacksonville, North Carolina, so, and by the time I actually caught it, I wouldn't even do a fucking video again. I was trying to enjoy my little four-day fucking time off from work and shit. <clears throat> so, it is what it is. But in the midst of it, when Stevie J sat down and talked with Jocelyn, she handed him the baby and began to talk about one of his fucking children. 
I don't know if y'all caught it. Like Stevie whole face told the whole fucking story. Just like, I'm not going to sit here and just let you talk about one of my daughters like that shit. Cool. Like, no. And he was already plotting on getting her back. Now, you know, James Cole did make a good point about at the very end of the show, the whole S lead thing, Maji. But that ain't that ain't what I'm here to talk about. Stevie J had a plan well after that. Because again, think about everything that's been playing out on social media. And some of this he has been egging on and you know, putting things here, 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 and there. Why I say this? Because the fact that Jocelyn is out here showing her ass on the fucking internet. He could possibly use this to say that, hey, she is an unfit fucking mother for all of this bullshit that she's fucking doing. The craziness. Now, Mona Scott. <laughs> I, for real. For real. And then Mona Scott. Y'all got to understand. Mona Scott know where her superstar is. Because when shit fell out between uh, Jocelyn and Stevie, who got a spinoff and who just got a one episode special in the midst of love and hip hop? Don't worry, y'all. Wait. So I think we all know the answer. Mona always been on Stevie's side. Always. Real talk. And I th and here's the thing. The fact that she, that Mona went so far as to sit here and give us well, first and foremost, we already have evidence of what has happened, you know, with Jocelyn. But that behind the scenes footage, none of us knew about. Again, now it's on air, so Stevie could fucking use that to even say, <clears throat> even after having this baby, she's still been out here fucking wild. And now she's on the internet. Now she's sitting here going off and everything. So, I'm going to go from Stevie and Jocelyn. Now, I'm going to go from Jocelyn to Mona. Now, apparently, Jocelyn was saying that she quit Love and Hip Hop. Maybe she quit. Maybe Mona fired her. We don't know. But that had been going on for, like, that rumor was going on before this last, well, the finale aired. <clears throat> so, Jocelyn goes, I think it was IG Live, I believe. And she started going the fuck off, talking about how Mona owes her, I think, I think it was one hundred fifty thousand. I think more than five or two, but I think it was like one hundred fifty thousand. Her going off about that and saying that you owe me for this and da 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 da. Yeah, you own the gram and everything else. Stunned like you got money. <clears throat> now here's the thing. Let, let's be clear. Let's be clear. If you owe money, get your money. Let's be clear. If you owe money, get your money. But why are you on here and you going hard about this hundred fifty thousand? Which means that you need this money. And of course, those love hip hop checks are about to come to a screeching halt. And here's the thing. One thing that a lot of people don't understand about reality television. Some of these uh, stars actually, you know, branching off <clears throat> like Portia Williams. I can guarantee you if Real Housewives of Atlanta cut off Portia Williams, there's a good chance Dish Nation is going to do it with her either. Because again, that's added publicity that Dish Nation gets because she's on Real Housewives of Atlanta. So if you're not bringing us the extra attention, why do we need you? Yeah. <laughs> no furniture. Don't do it. Don't do it. But just this whole entire thing. So it's like, do you really understand? So yeah, Jocelyn was on the real, but again, if you not on love and hip hop, it's a good chance the real may not ask you back because again, you being on the show is gonna call is gonna have some of you from love and hip hop watch us. So if you're not there, what are you really bringing to the table? You feel what I'm saying? So it's like you shot yourself in the foot there, going off talking about the people's court. How you going? If you really had a case, why are you gonna take it to the people's court? Betty, if you had a case, here's the thing: don't let your right hand know what your left hand gonna do. If you gonna take her to court, just take her to court and let it be a fucking surprise. But the fact that you sit here announcing everything that you're going to do, like you're giving Mona all the ammunition that she needs to sit here and gather everything from the past six seasons and have another sit here and literally take your ass all the way the fuck down. Plus, Mona got more money than you do. She got lawyers and shit. So, Mona, I don't think Mona gonna lose this fucking battle. And then you brought up Judge Math. Was it Judge Mathis? She I think she brought up Judge Mathis. Now, we all know Judge Mathis is gonna sit here and call somebody a crackhead and motherfucking man. Like, really? I'm just like, Jocelyn, Jocelyn. <laughs> that, 
I would love to see it though. I would love to see it. That shit would be fucking hilarious just to see fucking Judge Mavis sit here call ass a crackhead. I would be so here for it. All the way here for it. And now. <laughs> and then, um, so you have Shekinah. I, I believe that's how you say her name, Shekinah. She's uh, Tiny's friend. But she's also cool with uh, K. Michelle. So K. Michelle was at her restaurant. She kind of was there. Mona Scott was there. And she kind of threw shade pretty much saying how, you know, Mona Scott sit here and help people. She don't fucking hurt people. And, you know, K. Michelle had chimed in. And, and all she really said is me and Mona, you know, we fell out a while back, but we on good terms. And if it wasn't for Mona, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. <clears throat> well, Jocelyn got mad at that, and Jocelyn decided that she had some motherfucking words to say to her. And Jocelyn even went so far as to put um, on her uh, Instagram, I think it was a rat. I'm looking at it right now. So I guess like a mouse on top, and I think a hyena at the bottom. And it says, You top me bomb, do the map, click up, bitches. That's what you gotta do. Dick riders, I stay popping. <clears throat> and. You know, just that whole thing and whatnot, and I'm trying to figure out why you going on, why you going against K when it wasn't K that really said anything or even fucking sparked this whole fucking thing. Well, yeah, hit dog with holler. I mean, I mean that's that's the fucking true fact. But it's like, but you ain't go out to fucking Shekinah again. This I don't understand. Whatever. K Michelle, you know, went so far as to say, at Jocelyn, you was the same bitch trying to turn my mansion into a trap house. Snort coke in my bathroom, bitch. <laughs> Give that nose a rest. Puerto Rican crackhead. I got some time before my meet and greet ho. Chanelica Benincourt, all the cocaine you do, and you still manage to find a time to stick your nose in my business. You find time to cover me, but you can't come I'm, I'm sorry but you can't comb that pretty little baby hair that pretty little baby hair what is grace hashtag free bonnie bella i'm gonna get to the hashtag free bonnie bella in a minute and then i'll say lol i didn't even do anything to you i never spoke bad on your name but let's go tyrone biggums and one more thing before i go i was a great friend to you I even went and bought your 28 day crackhead challenge at <laughs> Jocelyn. I don't think you want to do this, mamacita. Oh, and my last piece of advice to you as a friend hang that music up, Mike. I'm sorry, drops the mic. Now, <clears throat> now. <laughs> <laughs> she went the fuck in. She she really did. Now, now here's the thing. I know a lot of people mad about uh, K Michelle bringing the baby into it. Now here's the thing. I do believe <clears throat> in general, children should not be used in battle. But at the same exact time, I have been heated and I've said some off the wall type shit. And I mean away from this shit, right? I, I've said some off the wall shit. <clears throat> but all was fair in love and war. And the fact that she picked that fight with K. Michelle and K. Michelle to do shit to her, hey, K. Michelle kind of went the fuck in. And K. Michelle had some fucking reads for days. I, I mean, I laughed at the shit. I fucking hollered. And even with the whole hashtag free Bonnie Bella, Stevie is even saying bringing Stevie back into this. <laughs> you know, fair fight. Um, saying he actually has a shirt that says free Bonnie Bella saying that Jocelyn is keeping him from seeing his baby girl. So <clears throat> there's where the whole free Bonnie Bella thing is coming in at. And I mean, shit is continuing to spiral between the two. I ain't got time to sit here and go. I, it's a it's a whole fucking lie and shit. I think we not already been damn. We not already been here 45, 47. Mm -mm, nope, nope. But I'm just saying. Shit funny as fuck, but that's but that's that love of hip hop fucking news. I read some shit about Bambi, you know, sitting here being mad at Scrappy. I ain't even talking about that shit. I ain't been doing. I ain't been doing. But I'm gonna end. Well, not end the show, cause y'all know we still gotta do the congrats, and we gotta pick who go take the L and the W for the week. <laughs> but. <clears throat> Let's talk about Jay-Z, <clears throat> his album, 444, and everybody who got hurt feelings. 
child's abuse. Don't, don't, no, not rehab age too. Don't do that. Not the baby. So. Before we <clears throat> get into people with their hurt feelings on this fucking uh, album. First you have, um, <clears throat> so the album came out on Tidal. And it was saying that those who uh, have Sprint will <clears throat> have the opportunity to listen to the album. So for those who have signed up after the 26th of June <clears throat> to listen to this album, they had hurt feelings because if you sign up after the 26th, you were not going to listen to that fucking album. Now, I've heard some people have, but the majority haven't. So <clears throat> I guess it was one of those where they knew people were going to do that. So they kind of shut that shit down. It is what it is. Now, for those who still want to hear the album, of course, there have been sources to listen to the album. I've seen it. I haven't had a chance to listen to it because, again, <clears throat> a motherfucker be working and shit. I'm about to be out the loop for at least another four fucking weeks in the near dear. So it is what the fuck it is. But <clears throat> if you want to hear the album and you haven't heard it this week, I don't know when, but this week it is going to be pretty much made to all the other streaming services. And y'all will also be able to buy a physical copy of Jay-Z's album if y'all want to hear it. <clears throat> so, with the whole 444 and Tyler, let's talk about Kanye right quick. So, Kanye is leaving Tyler. I did read that he has already left, but again, I, that's still up in the air. So, I will wait a week to kind of talk about that. But, <clears throat> he claims that he is old more than three million dollars in general not to mention that his album the life of pablo brought in 1.5 million brand new uh title subscribers which was supposed to give him a bonus but i think we all know even with people who join the title there's all these different you know trial free you know type of things and whatnot so it might have brought in 1.5 but i don't know how many of those 1.5 actually really fucking stayed so he's upset about that money right there mm, is what it is right <clears throat> so right now there's a battle with that and the whole finances and whatnot <clears throat> now of course we all know that jay-z kind of went in and talk shit on fucking Kanye. And a lot of people were trying to figure out where the fuck that shit stemmed from. Some people think that it has something to do with this lawsuit. But if y'all think about it and the fact that this album released. I, I'm not saying Jay-Z ain't got the skills to hurry and put, like, do a song and drop it on the album. But I think it was like a year ago. Kanye was at a concert and literally blasted Jay-Z. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Five, of course. But he went in on Jay and Beyonce, mostly Jay. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it was more or less the fact that he aired all of that out rather than calling him, which led to Jay-Z pretty much kind of going in on his ass somewhere on a fucking track. So there's one person that's upset with Jay, but that's but that's not for the 4-4 four, four album, but he's leaving title. And a lot of people thought that it might have had something to do with the album, but actually... The motion for him to leave was set in words a couple weeks before the album actually came out on title. So, so let's talk about Eric Benet. Now, I like Eric Benet <clears throat> on some real shit. I'm I'm tr I'm slowly getting back into new music. So anything that came out from. 2013 up until now I'm slowly getting back into music but Air Bonet, I've been fucking with Air Bonet for a minute the boy can fucking blow, I don't even fuck what nobody say I mean, I dare I say it he's one of the few artists where I don't think anybody really can sit here and fuck with him the only person I think that can really, male type the only male thing I think that can really fuck with Air Bonet is Ursha I'm just saying oh no, that, that boy can blow, that, that boy can fucking blow like I was, <clears throat> For the month I was away, I had to put one of my damn people up on it because he know that sometimes I cry, but and that's off his um Lost in Time album. But I went ahead and played uh, paid feature him and uh, Ed Levert just to show him, you know, like that old old school shit. But then I played the actual title track Lost in Time, and he hit that note twice and then went up on the second motherfucking note. Don't don't sleep on there. But Jay Z had um. <clears throat> 
pretty much put in his song and I think it was him apologizing to Beyonce and kind of putting the whole fact that he cheated on her out there saying you almost went Eric Benet let the baddest girl in the world get away <clears throat> pretty much saying that he almost you know sat here and fucked up in that whole thing Oh yeah, everybody can give you motherfucking feelings. Like the boy, the boy like, again, the motherfucker can blow. I don't give a fuck when nobody say. I, but again, you know, we in the day and age where people ain't trying to hear real saying. They trying to hear that love, you know, sir, you know, that look radio friendly, you know, real ABC one two three type of lyrics and beats and shit. Okay, but I digress. Now, when Jay Z had put that comment in there, oh, you can't deny the tap. But Eric Benet got his foot. Now, here's the thing. When Jay-Z put that in there, if I was Eric Benet, I wouldn't have said shit. Because motherfucker would have been like Eric Benet. And they would have started looking up Eric Benet, saw that he was fucking with Halle Berry's. And then would have probably even listened to motherfucker music. But he had to sit here and say, I'm married to the baddest girl in, right now. You know what I'm saying? That old thing. It's just like, come on, Eric. See, because now, now you're doing too much. You ain't have to say nothing. You ain't have to say nothing. You could just let that shit just play itself. The fuck out, you ain't have to say shit. So I was a little bit, you know, like, come on, Eric. Now, and even with the whole him being with Halle Berry's, let's, we ain't gonna sit here in front like Halle Berry's ain't had issues in her past fuck relations where many motherfuckers then left her ass because they said, you know, she was a look hoo hoo in the motherfucking head, I'm just saying. I'm not saying, just saying. And then you have Future. Now, there was a line in the song. I, I I don't know if it was the same song or not. I ain't listened to the shit. I've heard snippets and whatnot. Oh, okay. I didn't know Eric's wife did that. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, he did. He did. I don't know who he's married to now, but I don't. I don't think that she's a celebrity. I think she's just a regular everyday girl. But in one song, Jay Z said. In the future, other niggas playing ball. I'm sorry, playing football with your sons. Now, I mean, maybe just maybe. <laughs> she ain't know how to bury. <laughs> now, maybe just maybe. Uh, it ain't no maybe just maybe. Yeah, that was shade in the future. That that was that 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 was. Okay, see, now I gotta look this up. Now, oh, Chris X Wife. Oh, oh, right now. Okay, sloppy second. But, um, Future felt some kind of way about that. And Future had put a picture of him with his son saying, Play with kings. You just a worker. Royalty. And I mean, if we're gonna be honest for what it's worth, he was upset. But for what it's worth, Jay Z somewhat is a worker because even with some of his business ventures, He's more of a face than anything because some of these ventures, he does not necessarily own everything. If it's Mate, I'm going to lose my damn mind. I don't know if it's Mate or not. If it is, I'm probably I'm fucking lose. And then, you know, there was this uh, verse saying, you're on the ground holding money to your ear. There's a disconnect. We don't call that money over here. Okay, it's not Mate. Okay, okay, okay. And... Future went on Snapchat, posted a picture with money to this say, you ain't got the juice like that. And I'm like, okay, because that's reference to that one song uh, about OJ and whatnot. And even with that same quote, Boosie Badass had when I think it was his IG live as well. Now you had a lot of people that was going to Boosie saying, did you hear what Jay-Z said? Da, 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 da. And I think Boosie had enough where he went on <clears throat> IG and made a statement. I'm not mad that Boosie made a statement. What I'm mad about is how long he went on this fucking tirade. Because it's one thing to address the situation real calm, real cool, say your piece in less than a minute and get the fuck off the motherfucking screen and shit. He, he didn't do too much. I fucked with Boosie. I, I fucked with him. But I think he went too far because, like, he went on a fucking rant about that shit. And I was just like, "Damn, Boosie, you you went hard, motherfucker!" Like, I was I was throwing a little bit. But I mean, he did make a good point where it's just like, "Well, shit." <laughs> he embarrassed y'all. <laughs> but it's but I mean, it's, but he does make a good point. If Jay Z said this, would you gonna do it? You know, what I'm saying? if Jay Z said jump off building, are you gonna fucking do it? But here's the thing, if that's how you fucking floss, that's how you fucking floss. If that's what you want to do with your money, is what you want to do with your money. And all he had to do was just get on camera and say to all of y'all who have been, this is what he could have said real quick. I could, I, hey, Boosie, if you ever see this, 
If you ever see this, you can hire me as your PR, okay? I'll help you out. Just make sure I'm not in my feelings. I might take the wrong motherfucking thing. But all you got to do is just say, for all those who have been hitting me up, I heard what Jay-Z said. Jay-Z is a very talented man. I respect him and his crab. I understand how Jay-Z feels, but that is not going to stop me from doing what it is that I want to do. So if I feel that I want to hold money to my ear, I will do that. But like I said, again, Jay-Z, I love his music. I respect him. And that's it. Done. And you can even take that state, those that statement and chop that in half and just fucking be done with it. But he went on a rant. I'm like, well, damn, people in their motherfucking feelings. So I don't think that Jay-Z is necessarily going to clap back. But, I mean, you never know. He might. He just fucking might. So, finna go ahead and get these congrats out the way. Then we gonna sit here. I'm gonna let you guys pick who gonna take the A or the W for the week. And then that's pretty much it, y'all. So, congrats to Rihanna. Now, she been spotted with this boo thing of her. Now, I don't think I don't think he did either. I mean, again, it's just one of, again a hit dog will holler, and the easiest thing you can do is sit here and pay shit does. And I've said this on many different fronts where if you ignore shit, it will eventually fucking die. But as soon as you sit here and play into it, the shit is going to continue to go. Cause like I said, I treat I personally treat a lot of shit like a fucking unruly fucking child. A child gets to act enough. If you sit here and play into that child acting a complete ass, they're going to continue to act the fuck up. If you pretty much show that child you ain't paying no fucking attention, after a while, they're going to stop fucking crying, stop throwing a fit, and move on to the very next thing. So, but, back to Rihanna, congrats to her. She, um, she has a boot thing. I don't know if it's going to last or not. Nothing against her, but some so, some sites are saying that they're not really together or whatever. But, boy got some money. Um, dare I say, he probably got billions. His name is uh, Hassan Jamel. His family owns the rights to sell Toyota cars in the Middle East. Been linked up with him. Apparently, Naomi Campbell was linked up with him once upon a time, but we ain't here to talk about her. But all I'm going to say is this. Get money. Get money. Okay? I don't think Rihanna's in that spot to really be in a relationship right now, but guess what? Get money. Congrats to Jay-Z since we just got done talking about him. His 4-4 album went platinum. A lot of that has to do with the fact that he had that deal with Sprint and Sprint had already brought so many licenses to the album. So off ripping with platinum. Say what you want to say. Congrats to the motherfucker. Your shit went platinum. And finally, congrats to Sierra and uh, Russell. They uh, have recently celebrated their one year wedding anniversary. So congrats to the happy couple. So now that we done sat here and we done said all that motherfucking shit. <clears throat> okay. And right quick, even before I finish, with the whole Robin China thing, because it just came back to me. If I didn't already say it, the only thing... Wait, did I already say it? Yeah, that he might not get the child. All right, so we good. We good. Congrats to them. So, L's and W. So, who gonna take the L for the week? Because we didn't have a lot of people. We didn't have a lot of shit. Now y'all gotta make. I'ma just give y'all my opinion, but I don't. I don't sit here and. Oh damn, shit, nigga said. Bro, okay, I, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put Rob. I'm gonna let y'all vote, cause like I said, I mean, this ain't it ain't me. I, I want y'all. This this is our show, but y'all y'all is y'all vote. They count, okay. I mean, personally, I will probably say that um, you know, the the Jenna girls. I will say the Jenna girls take the L. But I don't know. And it seems like we lost a lot of people. So I, I guess it's one side. All right, fuck it. <clears throat> Rob won't take the motherfucking L. Most deaf Rob. Okay, Rob. Okay, so who who going to take the W for the week? Who 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 who, who winning this week? Who winning? We, 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 had, we, had a lot, we had a lot of shit popping off. So y'all let me know. <laughs> it goes to T.I. <laughs> Black Rob, bitch. <laughs> I, I I think Rob got it. I, th I think Rob got it, y'all. But who gonna take the W for this week? Like who winning? I mean, shit. If we finish just go off of stacks on stacks on stacks, I'm gonna say Rihanna winning. Okay, so you said okay, China or Mona? So I'm gonna just put half and half. China Mona. What what the rest of y'all say? Again, this is collaborative. This is collaborative. Okay, I, I got I got one for Jay. All right, <clears throat> it's a three way. 
Black China forgetting him to admit he paid off. <laughs> okay, okay, I guess we got two for China. <laughs> I mean, that is a win. I'm not going to lie. That, that is sort of a fucking win. And the fact that you'd had a mother come out and say that he didn't get you all. Now, she did get all them cars we possessed, though. You know, just saying. All right. So, I'm guessing that Rob going to take the L for this week and China going to take the W. So, for everybody, I want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in with me for this week of Tabloids and Trending Topics with T. For the most part, try to do this every week. I really, really try. Um, if I do give you guys one on this upcoming Sunday, I'll, uh, be gone for that whole week and then I'll be gone for like three weeks in July. So <clears throat> it is what it is, but thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, when this is on YouTube, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. Leave y'all comments and everything down below and I will see you guys for the next one. All right, y'all. Peace.